Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, your senior trainer and tech support here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's topic is annotating wall sections via materials. We'll be looking at where does Revit get the information for the leader. We will also explore possible ways to annotate the materials so they can be evoked without them becoming confusing. We know that items can be annotated from materials, where where in materials is it getting said information from? So with all this in mind, let us explore how we can actually get this done. In this sample, we have created a wall section. Now as we look at our sample, we can see that we have some materials already assigned to our wall design. When we look at the edit type in the structure edit of the particular wall, so let's go ahead and select the wall. Let's go to the edit type of the wall in the structure edit. And let's go ahead and take a look at the very first material here that we've got, which is the brick common. Okay, in the brick common, we have a couple of things that were added uh, in addition to the default description of the material, which is brick common, common brick. I went ahead and added staggered stack. Okay, now, the place that it gets its information from is the description. It's from this point right here. So let's go ahead and see how that happens. Let's go ahead and say OK first here and OK again and OK. And let's go ahead and identify this with a material tag. So we go to the annotate, material tags, and we save if we have to. And we now come in here and come to the point that we want to identify, okay, align our items appropriately, and then we place it. And so now we see that the actual material tag is grabbing its information from the comments of the material itself. Now there is one thing that I wanted to uh, ident identify this with you here, and that is this. Let's remember that you might have the same material um calling on multiple objects but it might not necessarily be the same material it might be a different description okay now how is it that we can actually go around that the fact that these materials are being now duplicated and not only are they being duplicated but now we have multiple materials with multiple descriptions which one is which how do we know well the best way to actually do that i have found is to actually in the manage okay let's go ahead and take a look at the example of the brick here which is the brick common now the only thing i really added to the description was the staggered stack okay so this is not part of the actual default com uh, brick common description okay so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and right click and select a new option which is called the duplicate materials and assets now, what this does, it makes this particular material not only a copy of the brick common, but it becomes a unique copy of the brick common. So it's no longer connected as it used to be when you were using shared assets. OK, so let's go ahead and say duplicate material. OK, and we'll call this one common brick stacked. Okay, and we'll come back to this and say okay, and we'll go back to the brick common one. We'll deselect the stacked to leave it as it was uh, upon its default um, um, opening of the software, as it comes in the from the software. Okay, and let's go ahead and say okay to this. Okay. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead, uh, rather after we do this, say OK to this, you'll notice that the, the actual material here went back to the original common brick. That means that this material is not the same one. So you, we have to remember to actually go ahead and select the wall again, edit type here, go to the structure edit, and switch the material to the stacked one. When you say OK all the way out, now you have your full description as we had it earlier. Now, there is one last question 
that I would actually put to you. How do you differentiate the materials that you created versus the materials that come from the software or in other words, the default materials? Well, it's rather a simple thing of, as let me just go ahead and show you by going to the uh, um, manage and materials. And it's a simple thing as you go to the ones that you create in this particular case we're looking at the big common stacked right and what i would love for you guys to do is go ahead and add a prefix the prefix here is going to be an underscore for me once i go ahead and say okay to that okay and i go back to the materials you will notice that at the very top there's a series of items that have an underscore you see that okay that means that all of these underscores okay are my creation it's my fastest way to uh, identify what is something i made up and what is something that actually came with the software okay now that we have seen how the material tag works let's take a look and see how the material keynote works so in order to understand the keynotes for the materials, let's go ahead and take a look at this particular material on our wall, which is the concrete masonry unit. Okay, so once again, we select our wall. We go to the edit type here. And we go to the structure, edit. And we look at the concrete masonry units, which is this one right here, okay? If we look at the material itself, you see that the concrete masonry unit just says concrete masonry unit. Now, we're trying to identify this not with the material uh, uh, key, uh, uh, the material note or the material tag. We want to actually go ahead and switch it to the keynotes for the material. Okay? So, in order to do that, we need to identify what the particular keynote we want is going to be here. So, we come over here to the, the button right here. We go over to the uh, masonry which is a division four, 422, which is concrete masonry. And A16, I believe, is the eight by eight by 16 two core. And we'll say, okay. Now the number appears here as the actual keynote number. Let's go ahead and apply and the okay to that. Okay. And let's take a look and see what it does to the materials that we have here. Well, let me just go ahead and make sure that it's, uh, I just hit the escape button and okay, I wanted to make sure that this is all set right. We know that sometimes we hit the escape button or the, uh, and it just doesn't hold all of our changes. So I'm just going to, like I said, verify that I did that correctly. We'll say, okay, all the way out. And at this point, we changed the keynote, but the concrete masonry unit doesn't work. Why? Because this particular object is a, is a material tag. It's not a material keynote. Okay, the material keynote is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and use the keynote here. Let's go ahead and take this one, shove it down a little bit so it's easier for us to go ahead and come in with the, the material keynote. We go to the annotate. And in annotate, we go to keynotes right here, and we go to material keynote. And we come here, and it automatically identifies it. Now, why is it identifying it with a series of text rather than the actual keynote number? Is because we have the keynote tag, keynote text style selected. If we switch it to the keynote number, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let me just go, go ahead and say modify here, select it again, and let's, let's make sure that we switch it. There we go. If I switch it, if we switch the actual keynote style from keynote text to keynote number, it switches back. So it's up to you which way you want to do it, but you can see that you have a very nice, very full descriptive definition of the particular material. Now, Let's remember, you might have all different types of materials. So once again, we go back to the annotate, uh, sorry, not annotate, but manage materials. And I always like to make this much more descriptive, the name of the actual material that I create. So in this particular case, it's not just concrete masonry units, but I say space eight by eight by 16. And that identifies the size because it's exactly what the keynote is calling out for. And I'll say okay to that. 
And so now this particular item is now defined as that. The concrete masonry units, if I want the numbers or the size of the actual units to appear here, it's a very simple item, which is that we need to go back to the material. And let's go ahead and let's steal it from here. This particular part of it. And let's go ahead, colon. And then just let's say, uh, oops, let's go ahead and type it out instead. It's uh, an 8 space X space 8 space X space 16. And that should be more than enough. It's already identified as concrete unit, masonry unit, CMU. Okay, let's go ahead and say okay. And there it is. There is your full description as described in the contents. So now we have seen how to actually go ahead and identify your materials, or rather tag your sections by materials. Okay, and you can go ahead and use the descriptive from the um, part of the comments in the material, or you can use keynotes. Either one will work just fine. And this has been James Cuervo with Digital Drafting Systems, thanking you for coming to watch our blog, saying thank you very much, hoping your day is an excellent one. Stay safe and healthy. Till the next one, thank you very much.